Hi, welcome to day 12 for 30 days Python series. Today we're going to see different different modules in Python and how to use each of these modules and what are the tasks we can do using these modules we will see. We will also learn how to create custom modules and use those modules. And at the end of this video, we're going to use whatever we have learned today and we will build an application which is called personal tracker using which you can manage your expenses like you can add your expenses, you can view your expenses. So let's see the project that we will build today. The project is going to be this project. You can see I have defined one function which is going to add expenses. And then I have defined one more function which is going to view expenses. And then I have added one main function which is going to basically give add expenses options, view expenses options and exit this functions options using while loop. Now let's run the functions and let's see the functionality of this function. So I would go run and in terminal. So you can see it is giving three options, add expenses, view expenses and exit. So let's say it's saying select one if in case you want to add expenses and if you want to see your expenses select two and if you want to exit the functions select three. So let's say we want to add expenses so I would just select one and then it is asking enter expenses description. Say I select something called chicken and it's saying amount so let's say amount is like maybe $45 and uh, now it has added the expenses. Now the way we can view expenses I need to again it says choose option so I would select two. Now it's giving the expenses you can see from my file which is called chicken amount 45 and this is the date you can see which date the expenses you know took place and if you want to exit it so you just need to say three so the function exited so this is what we will build today so let's start so let's see the modules that we will be learning today so the first module is going to be math using math module you can do the mathematical operations in python then we will learn the date time module using date time modules we can extract the date we can extract the time we can create a day, day name we can do a lot of things which is related to date then we will learn os modules so using os modules you can create a directory you can check a directory if a directory exists or not you can check the list or in a directory like what are the item exists in a directory and then we will learn something called random using random we will see how to create a random numbers okay then we will learn something called time modules using time module you can create a delay while executions your uh, program so we will see that then we will be creating a custom modules and we will try to import the modules in python and then we will try to use that modules okay so let's start with the modules which is called math so let's see what are the tasks we can do with math modules now we will need to import the modules so let's first add a cell and let's first import the math modules which is our first module so i would just go ahead and say here is that let's go ahead and add a cell here and i would say import math okay so this is how you import a modules modules are different different logic that are kind of you can say python file that is written by somebody else now you get all the functionality from that modules let's say we want to see all the functionalities of this module so we would go ahead and say add one more cell and we would say math dot and you will see all the function that this module can offer okay so maybe something like which is going to be sale that's going to round up the numbers let's see this function what this function does if you just place this question mark you see so you can see the definitions can return selling of an x numbers so selling is basically if you just give a numbers like maybe 5.7 or 8 you can see it's going to return 6 because it's going to return the nearest you know integer number the whole number so this is the selling function does now we have a lot of different different options let's see some more options so you would say math dot and we can check radians we can check floor divisions let's check for the floor divisions so the floor floor if we just give it something called 22.556 you see all this number is going to be ignored like whatever the number you see after the decimal point that's the floor you can see floor is 22 right then let's see some other functions that we have with this uh, you know which is math so I would say math and a square root so this square root is going to give this square root let's say square root of 4 is going to be 2 you can see it here if you want to check square root of 64 that's going to be 8 so different different operations you can do using this function which is called module now if you want to see more you just need to type math and you can just press this you know dot you will see all the different different functions that this modules offer right now if you want to see more now if you want to seek help regarding this modules you can just type help inside this parenthesis just type math okay now you will be seeing the detailed definitions what this module does how this module does what are the functionality this modules offer you can see it here you can click even this link that's going to take you to the python official you know official site where you can learn more about this modules and all the functions you can see this sale which you have already checked we have comp we have a uh, lot of different different you know functionality of this modules we have floor which you have checked and uh, we have a lot of other things as well you can see factorial also you can you know use using this module now let's see something else let's see our the second topic which is going to be daytime modules which is one of the important modules 
so for that we would just need to import the date time so let's go ahead and import the date time and we will solve few of the problems here you can see it here so let's go ahead and import date time so it's import now for date time you need to say from date time okay and import date time so this is how you will need to import the date time because this date time is stored in the python so from the python we would need to import it right so once you say it it's imported as a date time now what you can do is that we can check the functionality of this date time so you just need to say date time and if you just press this dot it's going to give you different different options so you can check the time you can check the date you can check the hour okay you can check the day a lot of things are there so what we will do is that we would just go ahead and check something called now because this now function is going to return the current time from the cpu which is the machine time you can see it here so you can go ahead and say now store this in a now variable and uh, we would just go ahead and kind of run it next what we will do is that we will go ahead and say now dot hour okay so here i just need to add this parenthesis and now i would say that now this is the variables which hold this value which is called date time dot now and i would say now dot hour so this is going to give me the you know hour from the system you can see it is a a 17 o'clock which is giving the hour so if you want something else so you can just add one more cell you can go ahead and say now dot date okay so if you want to know what this function does you can see this it return the date object same year month and the day right so if we just execute it's going to return the date you can see it here okay if you want the time so you can go ahead and say that now dot time so it is going to return the time you can see the time in the seconds and uh, this is the you know milliseconds we have uh, minute we have hours minute seconds and milliseconds okay now if you need day name you just need to say now dot str f time which is called string functions time and here inside this single parenthesis you just need to press this percentage sign and it will just press a a capital a that's going to give you the day name from the today today is the tuesday you can see it here okay so these are the different functions you can basically do using a date function now there are a lot of other functions are there if you want to check you can again just press now dot and you would be able to see all the functions this date functions offer right because see in this now we are holding this value right so even you can say this and you can type dot and you will see all the functions right so the day fold all these different different things okay so mostly whatever we will be using is like hour and maybe the minute or second or maybe the time okay and we will be using some time which is called strf time now if you want to see instead of day name if you want to see the maybe day number you can just press the day you can see it's the day number which is 24 if you want to see the month you can just press m it's 9 okay if you want to press b you would see it's showing short form of month right you can also press c it's going to give you the day name and month and this format so different different functions are there based on the requirement we will see which one to use okay so this is part of date modules which you can see it here now let's see our next module which is called os modules which is another one of the important functions now we we will solve this problem which is called return the date time as per the indian standard date month year from the system okay so let's first solve this problem so i would go ahead and say that this is for my task one task one problem so now i know that now dot if i say now dot basically time or now dot date this return the system date right it's 2024 9 as a month and 24 as a date now we need to return the date in this format which is called ddmmyy which is indian standard right so the way we can do that for that we just need to write something called here st rf time because we will be doing some string formatting here and here you need to write something like this which is inside this double quotes i need to write simple this function which is called percentage and i need first the day then i would say this and the slash then i need is that again percentage then i need the month then i would say slash then again percentage i need the year so here you need to put in capital then you can just give a comma one space and then i need maybe the hour so i would just go ahead and say that percentage h so hour must be capital and then i would just use colon sign and then i would just need maybe minute so before minute i would need to press this uh, percentage m and then i would need the second so i would say percentage second okay 
So if I just execute it, now you can see I'm getting the date, which is 24092024, but I don't see this times. I, I, I see this time as a zero zero. The reason is that I am converting from this date. From this date, I would only get the date. I don't get the time because the data is now being converted here. So for that, I would just reverse it back to now. And from the now, I can use this functions. That's going to give me even the time as well, along with this minute, you can see it here. Okay. And the seconds. Let's see now OS modules, which is going to be the main modules that we will be using so frequently. So let's see how to import the OS modules. So you need to say import OS. So this is how you import OS modules. Okay. OS full form is operating system, by the way. So using OS module, you can create a folders, which you call directory. You can access the files in a folder. You can create a files. You can do a lot of things. Okay. So we will see the OS modules. So you can see I have imported the OS modules. So let's go ahead and uh, add a new cell and let's see what are the tasks you can do using OS modules. So if you just type simple OS and uh, you see all these functions are there. It's something called path. So this is going to give you the path of any of the directory. Now, if you have other options, you can see all these options here. Now the important options, let's see one by one. So we can we can say something called get C W D that's going to give you the current working directory. So I am inside this day 12. So this is my current working directory. So if I just now type get C W D, that's going to basically give me the current working directory, which you can see it here. So this is my username. And uh, in this folders, I have this YouTube folders in this, I have this folders and then I have this folders and then I have this folders where, which is my current working directory. Okay. Now you can verify if a file exists in the current working directory or not. So for that, you just need to say OS dot path okay dot exist so this is going to basically check if a path exists or not if you just check it says test whether a path exists or not a return false or kind of broken so if in case the path exists it's going to return true right let's see so let's say we want to check for a specific file which is going to be path that's going to be kind of this app right so for that i'm just going to copy this related path and i'm just going to put it here and let's see if this path exists or not. Okay, you can see false. It's not able to identify because it is inside this uh, promo, right? So it's not able to identify. Let's say like this, just call app.py. Yes. Okay. Now you can see it is able to identify because this file is directly inside this 12 folders and this is my current working directory. Now if I want to give the complete path so I can just right click and copy the whole path which is called copy path and then I can check this uh, file so let's go ahead and check this file so you can see it exists right so you need to give the right path you can use the relative path if you're in the right you know current directory if the file is in the current directory you can just give the file name like this okay let's go to desktop and let's see one of the file exists or not let's say this is the file that I want to check if this file exists or not so I would just press uh, options to copy the path and I'm just going to put this in my in this functions to check if this path exists or not. So you see in this is uh, inside the user desktop and uh, this is the file which is called text. So you see I'm getting true. Now if I just make any changes here, I would be getting obviously false because th that path doesn't exist. Okay, so this is how you check if the path exists or not. Now let's see next module which is going to be creating a directory. So let's say here I have only one folders inside this 12. I have only one folder which is called promo, right? And these are the file I have. So let's first of all see how we can create a new directory which is a folders okay by the way files are items and folders are directory okay so let's go ahead and say that os dot mkdir so this mkdir full form is make directory now this is going to create a directory in your you know this current directory if you want so whatever the name you want to give you can just give inside this single quotes let's say i want to give a name called maybe promo okay so this is going to create a directory you can see it has created a promo to directory okay now we can check the list of items in this uh, you know directory which is called promo to so for that you just need to say os dot list dir okay so for that i would just go ahead and say here is that os dot list okay so these are the only importance uh, you know these are the only important os commands which you need to know so osdir and uh, you just need to give a path so let's say the path i define which is called promote to okay promote to it's a string so you need to give it as a string okay so you see it is giving empty because we do not have anything in this uh, you know promote to so this returns basically the list of items we have in this right return list of 
items okay so at the moment we do not have any items so it's the reason it's giving us empty now let's see if one of the folder has some items how we can see the items so in this folder which is called promo one this simple promo i have some items okay let's see if we can see this items path okay for that what you can see let's see if we can see all those items okay for that i can go ahead and say promo and you can see it is returning me a list of all the items that i have in this uh, you know promo let's say i would just go ahead and say for items in this all items and i would just print this items okay so it's going to print one by one items okay all the items now i can see it is printing one by one all the items that i have which is in this folder so it's called promo one okay so this is how you can use os to create a directory to check current directory and uh, to check all the items in existing directory okay now if you want to check items in any other directory maybe i want to check all the items in this directory which is a, this is a file right so for that i would just copy this directory i would just go ahead and say that copy directory which is copy file path name and here i can just go ahead and give this instead of giving it promo i would just keep it in the directory that i have copied okay so simply i would just put it here and let's print it everything you can see i'm getting all those things i have in that folders which is coming from my desktop okay this is how this os model is useful because we'll be using this os module a lot of time while creating even the today function that also we will be creating okay next modules is the random modules you can create a random numbers so let's import the random modules you would say import random and uh, we would just say that run it has imported random modules now using random modules you can create a random number so the most popular one is that you need to say random dot rand int okay so it's going to create a numbers from a starting a to b you can see it here so you can give a range called 10 to maybe 15 you will be seeing one number between 10 or 15 you can say maybe 5 to maybe 25 you can see any number if you run it again every time it's going to give a random number okay so this is the random module does now this also has a lot of other functionality you can just say random and you can see all this uh, random choice so if you just check this one it's going to uh, you know choice it's going to choose something from maybe a list of different different items so you can give it like maybe sequence of item let's say i would just give call apple and i would give call maybe banana and i would give call cherry okay i need to give it as a list so oops i need to give it a list list now i can see it is choosing cherry right if i just execute it again it may choose something else so a lot of different different functions are there the for now it's important is that rand int which i have shown you so maybe we will be using the rand int a lot of time okay so to create a random numbers rand int 50 of 500 okay it has given one of the random number between this range okay this is the random modules now let's see one more modules that's going to be the time modules then we will create our own modules okay so in the time modules you have a lot of functions let's see the time modules okay so you would say import time okay now it is imported now what you can do is that you can create something called time from the time modules you just press dot you will see all the functions okay make time time and the most important one is called sleep okay so if you just check this definitions what this sleep does you can just press this question mark you can see sleep for seconds so delay executions for a given number of seconds okay whatever the second you will be defining it's going to execute those uh, seconds it's going to basically delay your functions by those uh, seconds okay so sometimes it's very very useful for functions let's say i want to delay it by maybe three seconds okay and uh, i want to print something okay so i would say maybe print hello python okay and then i would want to delay it for three seconds okay so then i want to print maybe something you know after that okay you can see it is delaying for three seconds now after three seconds maybe i want to print something okay maybe oops let's put it here print you can see after printing hello world hello python it is waiting it has waited three seconds then i i, I have seen this result which is called waiting waited three seconds okay so if you want to wait it for 20 seconds you can just say 20 here it's going to wait for 20 seconds okay so now using these functions we would make sure that our functions you know create a delay while executions want to another code uh, just to ensure that they do not overlap okay now let's see how to create our custom module so for that i'm going to create a simple custom modules using lambda functions so let's go ahead and 
uh, create a new python file so maybe i would just go ahead and create here something called maybe i would create here okay so i would call new file and i'm going to name it call maybe custom.py okay so here we will be creating a modules that return a square numbers okay so for that we will go ahead and say that uh, something called custom modules so we want to create define a functions using def or we can use lambda but uh, let's say maybe we will use lambda okay so it's a lambda x and uh, times 2 okay so this function let's write it now this function things function return square root of a given number okay so this is fine let's create one more function now this one i'm going to save it call square okay let's create one more which is called maybe addition so addition modules so i would say again lambda x so this is going to take two arguments which is called x plus y and we would say what i want return is x plus y okay so this is simple now this returns additions so we can go ahead and say add and inside this add functions i can save this okay let's see only these two for now okay i'm just going to save these two and uh, see i need to remember this thing which is called custom.py now let's go ahead and see how we can import all the modules from this file and how we can use all these functions okay so this add functions return additions you can see this square functions return square numbers of a given numbers you just need to make sure that this module that you are trying to import that is in the same directory see i am inside this let me delete it i am inside this directory which is called d12 okay in the same directory i have this custom.py so i would just go ahead and say that from custom okay by default that uh, the python recognize that okay there is a file called custom you can see custom and i would just say that import and i get the options i have square if i just type add i have add okay you can see this add function is basically going to do these two things x and y and if i just type square it's going to do this lambda functions you can see that's going to return the square of any given numbers okay let's first see the square so you can just go ahead and say first of all let's import those modules now square module is imported let's test it you can say square and uh, you can just give a number so let's say give it six you see it's returning 36 so this is happening because we have uh, imported our custom modules okay if you want to check something else maybe the add functions now let's go ahead and sl and we would say add and if i give it maybe 2 and 5 you see it's returning error because it's saying add is not defined because we have not imported the add so we need to import the add functions for that we would just go ahead and say the same thing here is that from custom which is called import and we would say add okay because it recognized that now if i execute this you see it is returning 7 if you want to check it with another number maybe 22 and uh, maybe 8 you see it's returning 30 very simple right so this is how you can create different different modules you can reuse it based on your requirement okay so that is it about the modules now we're going to see how we can create uh, this project which is going to be mini project personal expenses tracker so we'll be doing a personal expenses tracker the one i have shown you earlier so if you want to see the requirements so the requirement says that developing a personal expenses tracker that allow user to add view expenses okay so user can add expenses they can view expenses okay so let's go ahead and kind of copy this requirement and uh, let's create a new file okay so for that i am going ahead i would just create a new file maybe here only or maybe i would just use this home directory so let's go ahead and create a new file new file and i'm going to name it called maybe app dot pi okay so you can see new file in this main directory which is called 30 days python okay so here i would just go ahead and first of all write down and uh, maybe a comment which is going to be like this is a personal personal expenses tracker okay now let me kind of ignore all these things rest of the things which i don't need anymore okay now first of all we want to kind of write down the requirements so i would be using a doc string like this and i will put in the requirements so it says developing a personal expenses tracker that allow user to add view expenses so the functionality that this tracker is going to have is that user would be able to add expenses okay and they would be able to view expenses and what we will add we will add one more functions that they would be able to exit the function okay so these are the functions 
our tracker is going to have okay so let's first start with the greeting so we would just go ahead and print our greetings that welcome to okay personal welcome to personal expense tracker okay so this is just going to give a greetings welcome to personal expenses trackers now before that we would need to import all the dependencies which is called libraries okay so dependencies we would be needing few of the dependencies one is called the import let's say import os we will be need os we would need import csv because we will store the data in csv and we will need date time so would say from date time import date time okay because date time will be using to generate a you know date from the system based on where the user you know at the expenses okay so these are the libraries we will be needing so once this is done then we are printing a nice greetings welcome to personal expenses tracker okay now next what we need is that we will go ahead and define one by one functions so the first functions i'm going to define is called add expenses right so the function name is going to be add expenses so we would say def and we would say add and we're going to say expenses add expenses now this functions will take two parameters one is going to be called maybe description okay one is going to be expenses amount okay so that's going to be amount now we just need to use a colon so once this is done now what do you want to do inside this functions right now once this function is triggered it is going to do two things it is going to add the descriptions and it is going to add the amount but where it's going to add these things it is going to store these things in a csv file so we need to open a csv file here now i have covered in the file handling how to create a csv file so we'll be using something called open that's going to take care of closing the file so we would say open with so with is going to take care of closing the file so here i'm just going to write that you know maybe creating csv file to store the expenses data right expenses data so let's put it as a comment so now i would say open so what do you want to open so let's say we want to uh, you know give a file name so for the csv file i'm just going to name it called maybe something like expenses or maybe expense.csv okay that's fine now the mode i i'm going to define it as a append because if there's existing data i don't want to delete those data right next i would just say new line because when you create a csv you need to define the new line so i would just define it as empty and i'm going to store all this data as a something called file okay and you need to give a colon to go next line now here i would want to insert the data which user has entered which is called descriptions and amount so for that i would just need to use uh, any variables here so i would just need to say that csv dot which is called writer and inside the writer i would just need to give my file name which is called this variable okay so this thing i would need to store in a variable maybe call maybe line okay so this is part of how you create csv if you have not gone through the day handling if you have not gone through the file handling in python go through that file you would learn it so once this is done now we need to store line by line or rows so for that you just need to say line dot white rows okay so white rows inside this you just need to put whatever the things you need so all in a list so first thing we need is this expenses that's going to be which is going to be this one descriptions what i need first thing then i need what is basically going to be amount okay now what i need is the date time okay now here we will be using this date time functions so how do you get the date time okay so to get the date time you can simply use go ahead and say date time dot now okay and then you can use this string formatting so after now you need to give this colon and then you say dot and you use this string formatting which you have learned earlier okay so you can go ahead and say this and here i want to capture the date and the time as well so you see it's already giving this is the syntax we need which is called this d m y and h m s okay so we would be writing the same thing which is called inside this single score uh, percentage d then we would say we need this slash then would say m then we need slash then we would again give percentage and then we would capture the y which is the year then i would give a comma one space then i would need the percentage hour then i need a colon then i would just go ahead and say that percentage which is called minute then i would give one more colon 
and then I would say percentage seconds. So this is going to capture the date and that's while inserting the records into the CSV which is called expenses.csv it is going to capture the information and it is going to store the information. So let me give it a different name maybe something called you know new expenses okay maybe something called personal expenses okay because I have one more expenses in the file right so personal expenses dot csv it's going to create the csv it's going to i'm using here to uh, you know i'm using i'm creating I'm, now here i'm inserting the values okay so this is done now next what i want to do once this is done which is going to the you know insert the information okay next what i want is that i may want to display message so i can do that which is outside this with clause so i can go ahead and say that print expenses inserted expenses recorded okay something like this okay expenses recorded so that is fine now this is my one functions okay now what else functions I want so other than that this is going to record the expenses right but second functions I would want to see the list of item in the expenses table you see the view expenses right so for the view expenses let's define one more functions which is here maybe so just go ahead and say view expenses okay so here we would say diff and maybe view expenses okay now this view expenses would not take any parameters this view expenses job is just to show the expenses right so for that we would just go ahead and say diff view expenses colon and what do you want to do so we want to read a csv file that's the job of this now to read a csv file again i have covered this in file handling so which is in the day i think 10 or 11 so we'll be using with function which is going to take care of opening and closing the files so we would go ahead and say with and we would say open okay this times we will be giving the same file which is called expenses this one okay this and we need to give the mode here as a read mode because this time we want to read it okay so i would just go ahead and say as file okay i'm going to saving save it as a file okay now to read it i would just go ahead and say content or maybe you can whatever you want to call it so i would say content equals and here i would just go ahead and say that csb dot writer and inside this i would just need to give this file okay so this one i can just name it called expenses okay make sure it's not overlapping with anything else yeah that's fine so this is going to basically print the expenses now where you you can see the expenses i can use a for loop and i can say for expense in expenses okay because this is going to hold all the list so i want to show one by one by all the list okay so for that i can go ahead and say like this and i would just go ahead and say print okay expenses so i would just go ahead and say expenses and uh, I would be using a doc formatting and uh, maybe you will say something called current month expenses so we would want to show the things like the you know the descriptions the product name and the amount and the date okay the day so expenses something like expenses and details so we would want uh, you know maybe fillers so that's going to show the descriptions of the expenses which is going to be this expense okay of the first record that's going to be zero okay then i would want and i would say the amount here i would show the amount so for that i would just go ahead and say that expenses of one because see this is holding this expense is holding all the expenses one by one row in one row i may have multiple expenses if i want to show you like this in one row i have like this expenses this is the amount and this is the date so if i use if i want to show this records one by one row so i would just go ahead and say that row one of maybe zero that's going to be print this expenses the description then if i just give one it's going to be the amount if i give basically two it's going to be the date so that's what i'm doing here so i'm saying that expenses details maybe the expenses details instead of that i would just say that maybe your expenses details below and i would just print a new line okay and here i would just give the name 
and what I want is that I want this the expenses product name and the amount okay which is going to be amount and I want to display the date okay so I would just go ahead and say I would I don't need this end so I'm just going to after this I'm just going to keep a comma and uh, or maybe yeah that's fine and I would just go ahead and say that what next what I need is the date okay so date colon and here I want to show the date so the date is going to be my third object which is going to be obviously expenses but two okay so that's it this is going to give me the expenses from this personal expenses.csv in a read mode you can see here okay so this looks perfect next what I need is that the main functions okay which is going to trigger this okay now we need to fix some of the things here we will come back and we will do that later on okay now we have created one function that add the expenses and add the amount and then we have created other functions which is showing the results from this personal expenses a tracker okay now we would create our main functions which is going to be def main right that's going to kind of trigger this whole functions right so we would say def dot main now in this main functions in this main functions we will be kind of giving some options to the users which is going to be like choose one two or three okay so we'll be using a while loop so that means the user will keep on getting those options user will not be able to come out come out of it until unless I select a option so we would just go ahead and say while okay true while true it's going to keep on giving those options so we would go ahead and say something like print and something like add expenses okay so this is the options one and we would go ahead and say print two dot view expenses okay and that's fine and we would give one more option which is called print and uh, three dot exit okay so saying while true so while true it's going to keep on giving these options right now as soon as the function execute user get options one option two option three right but user need to select any of the options right so user will select something like this okay uh, maybe we will just create a variable called choose and we would say input so we would say any options from above okay so user will select options maybe one two or three either he want to exit or she want to exit so user will select any of the options from this one or two or three okay once this option is selected what next we want to do now we want to use if logic to kind of uh, you know do something else right if in case user select one then we would want to execute this which which where we will be adding the op options okay so for that what we will do is that we would say if this choose that user is entering if this choose equals okay equals equals one because user is going to enter as a in uh, you know you know string so i'm just comparing with one if user enter this then what i want okay if user select this one then i want to collect the information from the user like the you know amount and thus the expenses right so i would need two things which is called the descriptions and the amount right so for that i would just use one more input so i would just go ahead and say input and i would say that please enter description user is going to enter descriptions and i'm going to insert that into something called description okay so that's fine next what i want to collect is call amount from the user so i would just go ahead and say input okay please enter the enter amount now user is going to enter the amount and i'm going to save this as a float okay so i would just need to do a type casting here called float and i want to ensure that they whatever the user select that get converted to float okay so the description and these things are fine once these are captured then i would execute my functions which is called add expenses right so this add expenses functions take two arguments one is called this descriptions and one is called this which is called amount okay so by default it is going to generate the time from the system okay so here i would just write that adding the expenses okay so this all things happens only if the user select option one what if the user select option two here so what i will do is that 
Click the user select option two that that is going to uh, uh, so I'm going to add elif logic here which is called the second if conditions. So I would here is that in the second elif conditions I would go ahead and say choose options two by any chance if the user has selected two where I would show them the view expenses right so for here I'm going to say that okay here I need to show the view expenses right so I would just write a comments maybe something like something like showing expenses okay it's a comment so let's go ahead and see how we can show the expenses right now to show expenses we can use this function which is called view right view expenses we can execute these functions that's going to show the expenses results so this functions return what is like your expenses all the details okay so you can see it here expenses amount and each and everything it kind of print here right so this is what does by this view expenses so we're going to simply trigger this functions okay now that is fine what else we need if in case the user select the third option which is called exit then we would just use something called elif one more elif or maybe we can use else but i'm going to use elif i would tell you why so i would go ahead and say elif and if this choose option is kind of three by user then i would go ahead and say it's three and it's two okay if it is three then i would go ahead and kind of break the loop okay break the loop because the user has exited right so i would just go ahead and break the loop and i can print a message okay maybe something like print thank you for closing the app okay now some of the logic building are still missing which we will do now okay first of all we will go ahead and see one by one uh, things that we have done and then we will be doing some of the you know additional things to kind of you know tune up this uh, functions okay but still we can go ahead and check it so i would just need to add a function which is called here okay i would just go ahead and say if and i would just go ahead and say that and i would just go ahead and say if name underscore underscore equals and i would just need to say inside this call underscore underscore main underscore underscore okay if this is true then i want to run this function which is called this okay now this is just going to ensure that if somebody import this as a module this is things are not going to you know kind of executed only they would be able to execute this okay these two things so this is again mandatory part of like you know creating the applications okay so this is fine next i can just go ahead and at the moment i can go ahead and test it but then we will fix some of the problems that uh, we have done here so let's quickly check so seems like it's a uh, printing a message okay and uh, so welcome to the personal expenses tracker um, okay fine so let's go ahead and kind of right click and run in terminal let's see if in case any mistake we will see okay so you can see that here it says welcome to personal expenses tracker add expenses view expenses exit so if i just select here add select one it's kind of saying that okay please select uh, please enter the descriptions okay let's add a descriptions call maybe something like maybe banana okay let's say amount let's say add something called five dollars and uh, it's you see it has created some file which is called personal expenses tracker okay now again it is giving me the same things which is called please expense uh, please uh, select any options so i can go ahead and kind of say that i want to view the expenses i would select two so here i am getting some issues while viewing the expenses which is called csv writer object not iteratable so let's go ahead and see what we can do here okay what is the mistake we have done so let's go ahead and uh, see this view expenses with open personal trackers mode is r as file so expenses csv dot writer as a file and we're saying for expenses expense in expenses right so the mistake we have done which is here while reading the files i have mentioned as a writer so this should be a read right for reading the file we need to say reader okay so that was the mistake and uh, everything else seems to be fine now let's go ahead and execute it again so i would just go ahead and say run in terminal okay let's first go ahead and clear the terminal okay so i would say three clear the terminal okay let's go ahead and run in terminal again so right click run in terminal 
okay so now you can see it is giving three options welcome to the personal expenses tracker add expenses view expenses exit so we want to add expenses maybe we want to view expenses now so plus two uh, you can see we have one expenses called name which is called banana the, uh, the expenses name and the amount is this and the date you can see and the time you can see okay so let's check one again let's try to add one more expenses this time so i would go ahead and add one expenses something maybe like egg it's asking for the descriptions egg asking for the amount so let's say give an amount call maybe 55 dollars and uh, then it has added the expense you can see expenses recorded we have got a message right so what i can go ahead and say now again view it so you can see now i have two expenses one is called banana which is this one and uh, i have another expenses which is called egg amount and the date right so if i just select three i'm you know out of the functions okay now we can run it again now we can kind of go ahead and kind of you know try it again okay so let's go ahead and select three so you can see the function is working perfectly fine thank you for choosing the app okay so this is how we have created the functions and uh, this function is working perfectly fine we can just do some hyper tuning here so first of all we need to use to ensure we need to use some more functions to ensure that this function doesn't throw an error now we'll be doing one hyper tuning here by any chance if this uh, you know expenses doesn't exist let's say there's no expense at the moment then it should basically not give an error now if i go ahead and kind of delete this okay for now and if i go ahead and run these functions again run in terminal and if by any chance i select the options two, which is called view expenses you see it's giving an error because at the moment this expenses file doesn't exist too. so we need to deal with that so what you can go ahead and, and we can add a you know os functions here which is called path.exist so what you will do is that here in this view expenses if in case this os file doesn't exist which is this personal expenses tracker then we would you know give a message call this uh, there is no expenses something like this okay so for that what we will do is that we would go ahead and use if logic we would say if and we would say os as we have imported os so we would say os path dot exist okay so we would first check if the path exists or not the path is what which is going to be this right this path so if this path exists so we'll be using colon here if this path exists then only we would want to kind of show this everything okay expenses details and i would just delete this line and what if this path doesn't exist then i would just use the else block here to show a message call else and i would show a message call print no expenses found okay so that's it now i also noticed uh, some maybe formatting which i can fix it here so it was mentioning something like your expenses details again and again which we do not want in every line so i can go ahead and kind of delete it okay so let's go ahead and this we can say expenses uh the product name or expense name expense name and it gives the expense name here right ways and the amount after the amount i would want to add a dollar sign okay so that's fine so what we have just we have added one if logic here so if this os and this path exist then only this function get executed otherwise this shows something like no expenses found okay so rest i think everything looks fine now i would add one more options by any chance if user enter instead of one two three okay so you should user will be getting error at the moment so if i now run this functions in terminal you can go ahead and see if i by any chance here i'm selecting let's say here i'm selecting four okay so it is still giving kind of the same please select any options so it should be giving an error if i select six it's still saying please select any options right so what we can do we can deal with it okay so to deal with it what i can do is that see after ellip i can use the else logic here okay so if in case user doesn't select one two or three so i would just throw an error which is called else else i can just print a simple error which is called so we would say invalid invalid choice okay please try again okay so this is just going to give a simple kind of warning that hey invalid choice but there seems to be issue with the, this logic which is if exist so basically we need to create this function which is outside and uh, then we can go ahead and check the if logic so we will create this function outside inside it we will put this if logic okay so 
view expenses and then inside this view expenses we check this file exists or not if this file exists if this file exists which is by this name called personal csv and then we kind of execute all this code if it doesn't exist then we show this error message so this is what we had to fix now if i just right click now and i would just right click around in terminal let's check it again so we would select maybe the options two uh, you see there is a expense name egg amount and the date right and also you can see the dollar sign here so let's go ahead and add more expenses called one let's say now i want to add something called chicken and uh, the amount is going to be maybe one zero one zero two dollars and uh, it's saying okay this expense seems to be recorded you can see expense recorded and we want to view the expenses select two you can see there are two expenses name which is called this egg one and this is called expenses record you can see even the different timestamp as well now let's go ahead and see maybe if i just by any chance select maybe five you can see invalid choice please try again if i select maybe 22 invalid choice right till the time you don't select right choice you will be getting error so if i select again maybe two you see i'm getting the view expenses which is here okay so that is how this function is working all right that's it for this video thank you so much for watching the video till the end if you have enjoyed this video do subscribe to my youtube channel share your thought in the comment box have a good day take care bye bye